Hey, good morning, Drive Time. Uh, welcome back. And uh, today we've got a real treat. Uh, we have a, a longtime friend with us, uh, Steve Olson. And the thing about Steve, you know, one of, what, one of my earliest memories of Steve was attending a, a men's night at a, a church. And when I walked in the door, what I saw was Steve wearing a Roman centurion's outfit complete with a sword and everything and and really the thing that that sticks out in my mind is not even the the costume but the fact that steve was just so excited to be in the costume uh so um while we won't be talking specifically about that event tonight uh but it it uh i say all that because uh steve you know, you've become a brother over the years, and uh, we do go way back. And I'm just glad to have you on, on uh, Drive Time today. Well, Dave, thank you for inviting me. Uh, it's an honor and a privilege to be here. And uh, I want to start out with saying that was the only time I wore a Centurion Roman outfit. So, <laughs> but it was awesome, and uh, it was uh, it was a start to our friendship. And um, you know, uh, the 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 topic. Um, that we're going to talk about today is really dear to my heart and that's about brotherhood and sometimes brotherhood looks a little weird you know it's like uh hey you know what i'm not gonna be afraid i'm just gonna step into this and and figure out and trust god to to lead um and uh you know it's pushed a lot of boundaries in my life i remember some, uh, the the men's event that we've that uh, we attended together there um, had a lot of different nuances to it. I think it had to do with some wrestling and some, you know, like there was all kinds of different things going on um, where men, anybody pretty much could participate and be a part of it. Uh, it had some strategic points to it as well, but it was really the whole idea of, of friendships and getting out of your normal everyday routines and, and, uh, and seeing, you know, creating opportunities for men to engage and be a part of something unique, something different. Um, and it just happened to be a Centurion outfit was a part of that. <laughs> but you know, the, the thing that really uh, sticks out to me was, you know, you provided the opportunity. Uh, there was a couple other brothers like Mike Ash, who's also been on here with us, um, doing some of these drive time videos. Um, you know, you guys just provided opportunities for a guy like me who was not raised in the church at all. Uh, I came to know Jesus shortly before I met you guys. And you just provided an opportunity for me to be a part of it. And I loved it. Um, I had gone through some a season of really being alone. So I just needed a place to be. And you guys invited me in. And, um, you know, that was, a, that was a significant part of the start to, to the brotherhood that I've learned that I belong in and I have a role in it. And um, so, you know, by the grace of God, uh, he's shown me what, what true love really looks like and in a brotherly way, way that's authentic. Um, so, yeah, that was, that was the start of it. Well, so, and, and I, again, I look back on, on all that fondly and I, and I remember uh, really in that season, I think we were both coming out of, uh, um, out of some, some pain and hardship in our past and, and coming into to really knowing who, who uh, Jesus is and, and, and who he is in our lives. Um, but you've, you've continued to run with it. Um, over the years, I've seen you go from, like you said, just a guy showing up and, you know, being willing to, you know, take on that, that fun persona and everything, but you've run with it. Uh, now at your current church, you, you're, you're continuing to lead groups and, and if you would talk about that a little bit from the standpoint of, you know, when I think of you, I think of all the guys that that you've been willing to invest in and be available for. You, you know, you you mentioned us as we were available for you, and 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 you've continued that. So, talk if you would, you know, kind of go down that road with me a little bit. Yeah. So, um, like the early stages of my walk with Jesus were really. You know, everything was so new for me and just learning to or what it meant to be around people that, that love Jesus and were willing to share that love and joy with those around them, meaning you, and Mike and Kyle, um, 
was it just rocked me like i had never encountered love like that and i had i mean just be honest like my past is is uh spotty from the get from the beginning like i knew what i had been around some gangs and some stuff like this and i thought i knew what brotherhood looked like like you would literally do anything to defend your brothers and this was just a whole new um you know, revelation for me, if you can put it that way, like, man, there is a tangible love that cannot be broken. And in some seasons, it, it looks more intense. And in some seasons, it's like you and I right now, we haven't talked for a while, but it's just like I just talked to you yesterday. And that's that holy, pure, perfect gift of God, which friendship is. And, you know, when you just embrace that, and are willing to share that with the guys around you with whatever, I mean, the men's fraternity, I, I, I did not have the, neither the resources or the place to meet or anything. And I just, I was, I was pushed by my good friend, Kyle Jackson to say, Hey, what does this look like? Like, if you really believe that that's changing your life so much, lead it, go do it. And it was really a guy stepping into my life just saying, I believe in you. I see something different than your reality might be that you don't have the money to buy the DVDs. You might not have the place to meet, but trust God. And I did. And God has just opened doors continuously for opportunities to be available, share the love of God, get into the word, pray together, learn together, cry together, and just grow. I mean, it's just, it's not a, um, you know, it's not as polished <laughs> as, as, as you sometimes see. Life is really hard. It's tough. But when you know you have a brother you can trust, and you literally just, I mean, it's like, you know, I've heard the term, you can hand each other the dagger. Okay, you tell me your story, and I'll tell you mine, but we can cut each other, right? But having confidentiality among brothers where I truly can come and I, I, I know I can trust you and, and I can share anything with you. That's a true brother. That's a true friend that will walk with you through, you know, the good days and the bad days. And that's really, that just made such an impact for me where I had the opportunity to grow with you guys and share my life. And you didn't judge me. You didn't tell me, go fix it or read the Bible more or pray this way. You just walk with me. And that was so life-changing for me that I just want to share that with other guys. Um, so I'm, I'm just, I'm super grateful. Um, you know, God is so good in every way, in every season. And uh, I just want to share that with those around me. Well, it, I mean, I, I appreciate that, uh, that, you recall it so clearly and uh, I'm, I'm glad to be a part of it because I, I know from the standpoint of, of watching you flourish doing groups over all these years, I remember when you started that quest for authentic manhood um, with just a couple of guys standing in your kitchen, um, you know, once a week uh, at, uh, I don't know what, 6 a.m. or something like that, thinking, man, I, I don't know why it works, but it seems to work. And, you know, I, I guess that's the, that's always the proof. If, if you can't explain why that group is, is working and why it's thriving, um, it probably has nothing to do with you and everything to do with God. Um, and to listen to you talk, you know, the thing that I hear is just this thought process of, you know, I think most guys want to be a part of that band of brothers and they want to have uh, friends that are brothers and be able to have that kind of depth of, of trust and relationship with other guys. And I think as, as men, we struggle with that. Uh, but the, the thing that I'm, I hear, and uh, I want to hear your take on it, is you're crediting a couple of guys for being willing to be your brother. And then you're in a season now where you're taking that and you're willing to be that brother. You're willing to be available for others you're willing to take that first step. So, um, and, and some of the guys who have been around me uh, um, through our men's group have probably heard me say, if, if you wanna have a brother, the first thing you need is to be a brother, uh, be willing to be a brother. Um, so uh, give me your thoughts on that or, or really, uh, you know, any tangibles about how we go from, you're in that dark season, you, you don't have those close relationships. How do we get to, what you're feeling now where you have different circles of close knit friends that, that, you know, stand the test of time. Yeah. I mean, uh, I think it's as simple as just being available and being willing to listen. You guys listen to me. 
you know, whatever I brought to the table, and I have no idea how, <laughs> I know it was messy, that's all I know. And, but you didn't, you know, you just, you just listened. And then I believe wholeheartedly that the Holy Spirit moved you to say different things and, and challenge me in different ways. And I mean, a 5 a.m. boot camp, who does that? <laughs> you, I mean, you guys started this stuff. And it's some of the most memorable times I have was, it was a 5 a.m. boot camp. I mean, who in the world would do that? But you guys made the opportunity. And through those times, our relationship changed. And I was able to ask questions and you're able to, you know, then it, then it got into the part of, you know, FPU, Financial Peace University. My finances was a mess. I owed, I think it was 65,000 hours to the IRS. I mean, I had every excuse not to be in any financial class, but I really desperately needed it. And through that, I've gained my best friends. I mean, literally the friends around that FPU table where you and Mike and a couple of the other guys made it available for me to come learn what finances is about. I mean, I still have them. My best friends came out of that. And it's just, so, you know, that was obviously a big part of you and Christie's reality. Like you wanted to learn finances and how to handle them well. And you shared what you learned. And that's what I said to everybody's like, well, what have you learned? Just share what you've learned. You don't have to know the next step. Just trust God and get out of your comfort zone. So if you're the, if you're the guy that have not done that yet, just take a step. If you're seeing men in your life at your church, for example, that are offering an opportunity to be a part, I don't care if it's a moving ministry or if it's a, um, you know, it could be any, any kind of, of situation where there's just an opportunity to come and hang out, just listen, learn, ask questions, and trust God to move all the pieces together. And because he's so good, he knows everything we're going through and he wants the best for us. So sometimes we have to step out of our comfort zone to be engaged and really participate because you can participate in a thousand things that might not have a lot of value and you can participate in one or two things that really are going to change not only your life, but the men around you and your families, your kids. So, you know, that's what I would say. Just engage, ask questions. Hey, where can I fit in? Or, you know, like ask those men to write around you. Well, that that's good. Um, and man, I, it's, it's been fun to, to be around you and, and to, to, even though we're at different churches and, and our circles have changed over the, the past, I don't know, 12 or whatever years it's been since we met. Um, it's, it's always been a pleasure to, to reconnect with you and hear from you. And I, I just want to tell you, like, it's to me, uh, the, those early years, I, I never felt like it was, me being available for you or like I had some big role in it. I just, you know, I, I was just trying to, to be around other brothers who, who were imperfect and messy and, and made me feel better about my mess. And, <laughs> and so I, I think that's just it. You know, you, you said it so many times, uh, you know, be available, just, just be available. And, and, you know, when, when uh, the spirit guides somebody into your life, take advantage of it. And, and uh, you know, who knows what, what brother uh, God will bring your way. But uh, hey, Steve, I just, I want to thank you for taking the time um, out of your day to, to press pause on what you got going on in a very busy schedule to, to just invest into what we've got going on. Um, because it's not about different churches. It's just about the kingdom. And uh, I just want to, on behalf of Drive Time and the guys who are watching, I just want to say thanks. Uh, thanks for taking the time. You're welcome, Dave. And, you know, it, it's um, my favorite verse is still, as I didn't show up and sign, so a friend starts with a friend. You know, and that takes a lot of pressure sometimes, takes a lot of heat, and we're going through this together. So we're one family, and uh, I love you. I appreciate you, man. Well, thanks, Steve. And uh, guys, join us back next week. Uh, we'll have another speaker, another topic. And uh, just take this week. Be available for those around you. and uh, You'll never know which brother you find. Steve, have a great week. You too. Thanks, guys.